Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at a 2022 BMW 435i convertible that has fallen into the wrong hands. Now this is a 15,000 mile clear title car. It came from one auction, went to the doctors, and then went to another auction. And what the doctors did to it isn't so good. I don't think the patient's going to make it. So let's take a look at what it looks like now, what exactly they did to it, and what it looked like before and see why you don't want to buy this BMW. All right, so here is our BMW. Looks like a nice light front hit. Missing a headlight here, which isn't a big deal. It's now a daytime only car, and we don't need that turn signal because BMW drivers don't use them anyway. So no big loss. Now we're missing our massive grills. That BMW just keeps increasing the size of. So a bumper assembly will take care of this and a headlight. Um, Looks like we have a drywall screw holding our bumper to our headlight. And nothing screams quality like a drywall screw on a car. Apparently they had some more drywall screws left in the box because they screwed the fender to the bumper. Or the bumper to the fender. Um, we do have a broken windshield. That's usually from the hood going back into it. Kind of a little red flag there. Uh, we also have some damage on the front edge of our door. That's usually from the fender going back into it. Another red flag there because there's no damage on our hood or our fender. Um, our door is open, but I'm not sure why. That could just be the auction guy. I didn't close it all the way before he took these pictures. Or the tow truck driver, whoever touched it last. The rest of our car doesn't look too bad. I don't see any damage on the back. There's a little scuff on the bumper here that might buff off. We have a little damage on our fender here at the top. It's kind of another red flag, usually from the hood going back underneath it, but there's no damage on our hood. Uh, it doesn't look too bad over here. Let's see what it looks like inside. No doctored up auction cars complete without the cutout airbags. Looks like we got a knee bolster and a driver's airbag. And looks like maybe a seat belt. Everything else in here looks pretty good. No curtains on a convertible. Seats look okay. There's no rollover bars in the back to worry about. Well, that's our 360. Let's see what our pictures tell us. Now we see the front end, covered that in a 360. The 360 guy did a pretty good job. Um, we do have some mileage on this one, uh, 15,000. Uh, it's listed as a stationary, non-run and drive. Uh, airbags deploy on BMWs. When they do, they also have a charge that disconnects the positive battery cable, kind of like a little airbag charge. So when that blows, you lose all the rest of this and the engine won't start. These are on a separate circuit, so they will light up. I would imagine that fuse was not replaced because they are pretty expensive. Maybe they just didn't replace it and that's all it needs to start. Or maybe there's something else. We'll find out. Our back seat looks pretty good. We saw that in the 360. There's the VIN number that you can Google and find out where this car is at. I didn't say that. Oh, hey, now we see what really happened here. Um, and we see the actual scammers at work. Now, there are some burn marks here, which means they used a torch on this. There is no time and no place for a torch on a unibody car. I don't know how many times I have to say that. You cannot heat unibody parts to straighten them. You can, and they'll get straight, but you don't want to be in the car when it gets hit again. So they clearly weren't trying to repair this car. They were clearly putting in effort to make it look better than it actually is. So our master cylinder is smashed here. The only thing in front of it is this tower. So you have to assume this tower at one point was touching this master cylinder. That takes a lot of effort. So this thing is hit pretty hard. Looks like our frame rail might be okay, but everything in between, destroyed. We're definitely gonna have some engine damage here. And the reason our hood and our fender look okay is their new parts. Uh, they bolted on a new hood, but they couldn't even be bothered with putting all the bolts in. 
I got one nut on each stud in the back and no nuts on the front studs. Talk about lazy. And they just bolted on the back of the fender here and there is nothing here supporting the front of the fender except for maybe the bumper that's held on with drywall screws. Looks like they pulled the radiator support up just enough, moved it around so when they close the hood, it'll keep the height just about right to make it look good in the pictures from the outside. So this thing is definitely going to need a front end assembly all the way to the cowl, and I would be very concerned with what this cowl looks like. Let's see what it looked like before. Well, that explains a lot more. It was at Copart before, and now we can understand why our door had a little damage on the front, the fender went back into it, why our windshields broke, the hood went back into it, and why our fender on this side is bent, because our hood went back into it. This is a pretty hard hit, and I've fixed some pretty hard hits. Clear title or not, I would not fix this car. Because the damage up here is just not worth it. This door is closed, so it must have been the auction guy that just didn't close it the next time. So it does open and close. And there's no damage back here, so that must have been in transport. There's our airbag before they cut it out. And now we can see just how bad that tower was. That tower is what smashed our master cylinder. That's all the way back into the cowl. And that's a pretty strong structural part. So in order to move that, it took some force. So looks like it just peeled everything right off this rail. And our engine is right about here. There's definitely engine damage there. That's why it won't start. In addition to the charge on the positive cable that disconnects it. That's about it. Our headlights definitely broken over here. So we're gonna need two headlights. We're gonna need a complete front end assembly. No getting away from that. Just need all this stuff. Cluster didn't light up at all here. Probably they didn't even try which causes other problems. They paid 15.7 for this thing. They bought it in 24th of August. Uh, and they have no mileage on there because they couldn't get it to light up. It does have a clear title from Colorado. Uh, they paid out 56.5. So it's definitely a valuable car. It is brand new. And here they're trying to get 22.9 for it. So after auction fees, they probably had about 17,000 in it. They had to ship it to them. They had to put a hood on it, a fender on it. So they do have some money in this thing. I don't know how much, I'm guessing maybe 19, 20,000. So they're just trying to get out of it. Still has our clear Colorado title. Uh, it is listed as partial repairs. Apparently they use that repairs term loosely. Uh, still stationary, but now we do have a miles uh, and it's not actual. So the title is going to say not actual miles and it's because the last auction didn't light it up and just wrote it down as zero. You can get that changed and fixed uh, with a lot of paperwork, but that is the least of this car's worries. Clear title or not, this thing probably should not be back on the road. There is no seller here, which tells you it's a third party car. You know, that's usually how you know that they're doctored up. Uh, that's something that IAA does and Copart doesn't. So I do like IAA better for that. Uh, there's the note down here for our partial repairs. So they're hoping that somebody is looking at this car and they see that it's got a clear title, low miles, and minor damage. And I guess they're hoping that you never open the hood. If you do, you are definitely not buying this car because that is a mess. And just to give you an idea what this car should look like, uh, here is one that is not hitting the front end. So our gaps are quite a bit different. There's all the damage here. This car only has 300 miles on it. It's pretty much brand new. This one should not be a total loss. That one's worth fixing. Funny enough, this one is a salvage title and the other one has a clear title.
So title type means nothing. So this is what it should look like under the hood. We're completely missing all of this stuff. Everything back here is completely crushed. So yeah, there's a, a lot of stuff that needs to be replaced in here, which is why I would not touch the white car. Although the white car would be a good parts car for this one. Of course, it's actually easier and cheaper just to buy a new quarter. We're talking about this one. Looks like it got a little too close to a semi. Probably changed lanes without signaling because, well, BMW. But somehow it ended up totaled with a salvage title. So I hope you guys found this video helpful of what to watch out for with third-party auction cars. Now, I'm not saying don't buy third-party auction cars because you can get some really good deals. A lot of towing companies dispose of their cars through the salvage auctions. Now, some of those cars might just be out of gas. They might even have no damage at all if they were in arrest and the people just never came to pick them up. So there are some pretty good deals because people don't buy third-party cars because of sellers like this BMW seller. If you are going to buy a third-party car, just make sure you look really closely at it so you know exactly what you're getting. Now, what they're doing is actually not illegal. It's just not really moral. It is the buyer's responsibility to inspect these vehicles, so they're just hoping that the buyer isn't looking that close, and they're preying on the uneducated. So, yes, it's not morally right. And trust me, there were people in the comments of the last one that were defending the sellers of the last vehicle, the Lamborghini. And by the way, the Lamborghini never made it to the sale. They pulled it from the auction before the sale date. So not sure what they're doing with it. It's still sitting at the auction. Hopefully, they're just going to keep it. Maybe use it as a paperweight. That's what it's good for. They can have a BMW paperweight to match. So whenever I get a chance and I see a car up in the auction that warrants a closer look, I'll throw it up here. So we'll do those on days other than Friday. So subscribe to the channel if you like videos like this and you might see them pop up. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.